What is going on guys, Flick here, and welcome to the first proper episode of this FIFA 16 Borussia Dortmund career mode. If you guys missed the introduction of this career mode, go ahead and watch that after you're done watching this. I go over some of the logistics of this career mode, including why I chose this particular starting 11, as well as why I chose to sell off some of the players that I did. But you guys left a load of player suggestions, so let's get into the short list. Based off of our starting 11, I think the two positions that we need the most work are our right back and our right wing position. So I've got a number of players here who can hopefully help fill that void. And starting with our first right back, we got Daniel Carvajal, Real Madrid player. And this would be kind of a realistic transfer because they, of course, did bring in Danilo over the summer transfer window. So we can maybe pick up Carvajal on the cheap. Of course, he's a young player and we're currently scouting all these guys so we can get a better idea of what their stats are and how much they're actually worth. We've also got Fabinho from Monaco, another promising player, and Jao Concello uh, from Valencia. But moving on to the right wing position, we do have a number of players here. First one being Kevin Volland, and this guy would be very versatile. He could play the right wing, he could play right mid, or he could even play center forward striker for us. And he's a very strong player. I've used him before, and I wouldn't mind picking him up. We've also got Bellarabi from Leverkusen. And we have a good idea of what his stats are and how much he's worth. He's going to cost us a lot of money if we do manage to pick him up. Uh, but we also have Johan Torre. And this guy, I think it would be a very realistic transfer. He plays for uh, a team in the Turkish League. I believe that's Besiktas. And a lot of Turkish players do end up moving over to the Bundesliga. You look at Çalhanoğlu and a number of other players. So I think this could be a great signing right here. Um, and then to round things out, we've also got Patrick Hermann, also worth a large amount of money and Julian Brandt, who could be an exciting young prospect. I don't think he'd be a starter for us, but still one that we could maybe pick up. Since we have a good idea of how much Bellarabi is worth, we're gonna put in a 25 million euro offer for him. We'll see what Leverkusen has to say. I don't think they're gonna accept this, because as our CEO has to say, he's recently signed a contract and he's looking to be worth about 35 million, but no harm in putting an offer. We've got a couple messages here from the board in regards to what they want us to achieve this season. And they actually want us to win the league title, which is going to be a difficult task because, of course, we do have Bayern Munich in the league who are a tough team to outplay in the Bundesliga. And then they want us to only reach the quarterfinal of the Pokal, which I think is a little bit more realistic. And in regards to the EuroLeague, they want us to win the Cup. So we've got a tough season ahead of us. A lot of expectations from the board, but we're going to try our best to achieve those expectations. In case the talks with Bellarabi don't work, we're also going to put an offer here for Kevin Volan, 20 million for him. We're going to see what Hoffenheim has to say, and we do have a bit more budget to spend in case that doesn't go through. Patrick Hermann is another player you guys heavily suggested in the comments, so we're going to put a 25 million offer for him and see what Munchen Gladbach have to say. Now, Nicolas Sula is a player that I've been trying to sign up in a lot of my career modes. And we're going to start with an 8 million bid for him. Uh, the board has to say he's worth about 12 million or so. Uh, but sometimes you can get away with cheaper offers. We'll see what Hoffenheim has to say. Now, for these Champions Cup fixtures, I'm going to be simulating it until we get to the final. If we do get to the final, I will play that last game. But let's be honest, we're playing against Tigres, a team from the Mexican League. So I feel like we should be able to win this. I'm putting out a pretty strong team. Uh, except for a few a uh, few minor modifications and already Shinji Kagawa got a ninth minute goal for us and things are looking good unfortunately Socrates got a 48th minute injury hopefully that's not serious uh, but we are still hanging on to this one nil lead Kagawa gets a second goal and I think that's his first of many goals this season and we've got word from the injury it looks like Socrates is out for five weeks that's not what we were looking for Luckily, we still have Subotic. We haven't transferred him off yet, and maybe that's a sign that we should keep him on this team. Moving on to the second match of our Champions Trophy fixture in the group stage. Obama Yang now picks up an injury in the first minute. What is going on with these injuries? I really haven't run into too much of a problem with injuries in the preseason friendlies, but luckily Marco Royce does get the first goal of the match in the 24th minute. We're not having a problem winning the games. It's just the injuries are being an issue. Maybe I should rotate the squad around a little bit so these... Key players for us don't get injured. Even players from the other team are getting injured. Let's get a goal here in the last 10 minutes or so. We can use another three points. We do get a draw on this one. Surprisingly, Borussia Mönchengladbach have accepted our 25 million bid for Hermann. And that'll be a great addition to the team as long as we can get through these contract negotiations. So we've got a load of money. So he's only asking for 60 grand a week. We'll gladly give that to him. Three years we will give him an important first team player for starts. We'll see what he has to say. Of course, training is also going to be an integral part of this career mode, so we'll simulate these ones, 
and I look to kind of train a lot of players and mix it up quite a bit. We got a couple of good results here, and unfortunately none of our players did go up in this session, but we should be able to see some good growth. We've got a counter offer here from Patrick Herman, and apparently he wants 140,000 per week. That's over double what he's getting right now, and I'm not willing to give him that much. I'll start with 100 grand a week, which I'd be willing to pay, but I'm not gonna pay you 140,000. That's just not gonna happen for him. We'll even give him the important first team player again, see what he has to say. Our final preseason friendly of the group stage will be against Sunderland, probably the most difficult opponent we've come up against, and Fletcher getting the opening goal, but Durham coming right back only seven minutes later. It's all tied up once again. Still no injuries, which is a good sign. I haven't made any rotations in the starting 11. Aubameyang's injury was only for like two days, so it really wasn't an issue. Marco Royce getting a goal before halftime. We now got the lead. Can we get another one? And Kagawa gets another one for us. That should be enough to ensure us the three points and the next stages of this preseason tournament as we defeat Sunderland. It's time for the semifinals of the Champions Trophy and we're coming up against River Plate, who has done fairly well uh, if we're talking in a historical sense. They're a pretty prestigious club. But Ginter, who asked for the start in this one, does get the first goal for us. So I might have to give him some more playtime. He's a very promising player that has quite a bit of potential. So we need to make sure we do give him enough playtime. Aubameyang nets a penalty. Gundogan gets an injury, hopefully that's not serious. They bring a goal back, can we hang on to this one? It's currently two to one in the last five minutes or so. Aubameyang seals the deal with the 87th minute penalty. We get the three to one win. Thank goodness Patrick Kerman has come to his senses. He's accepted the 100,000 wage offer. So 25 million is how much we're paying for him. I think that's a pretty fair amount because his actual value is 21 million. He's recently signed a contract. And compared to some of the other similar options, I think he's the best deal. Welcome Patrick Herman to the club. We're gonna start our transfer talks for Carvajal now, and I'm gonna start with a measly offer of 10 million. I really don't think Real Madrid are gonna accept that, but since they have so many quality players on their team and a lot of money, maybe they're just looking to get rid of him and they'll accept the pretty low offer. Our final match of the Champions Trophy will be against a pretty formidable opponent in Ajax. And I've rotated around the team a little bit. I've decided to give Castro 1021 the start in this one. Good one's a little bit low on his fitness, so I decided to rest him on this one. And this will also be the first game I'm using with Hermine. I believe he'd already played a match prior to this in the simulated ones, but still, I'm excited to use him. Let's get into it. We've seen the players in front of our eyes get fitter as this tournament has progressed, and uh, I'll be giving it the full Monty today. This match features Borussia Dortmund against Ajax. Oh, this is good. Caster with the steal. He just has to capitalize on this opportunity. He's taken down inside the box. And now we've got a chance to make it 1-0 against Ajax. Not sure what Riedewald was doing there. But Castro just gets by and gets taken down in a clear penalty. We're going to let Marco Royce take this one for us. And can he put it off to the left by the keeper? There it is, Marco Royce with the first goal of the year for us. He's going to pick up the ball smoothly. And it's 1-0 for us. It's another corner kick here for Ajax. Can we deal with it? They do have a lot of tall players. And we're going to clear it out initially. Can we get it away? No, we can't. El Ghazi sends it in. Roman Berkey with his first major test makes a good save there. That is why I decided to keep him in this squad. A lot of you guys were telling me to maybe pick up a better goalkeeper. But I want to at least give Berkey a chance in his first season here. Marco Royce to send this one in though. Can we capitalize on the corner kick? Obama Yang wasn't even trying to do that. But he's looking to score some sweet goals this season. Subutich playing this one inside. Patrick Hermann now is going to find Piszczek. Can he find a pass? We still got Julian Weigel into Castro. Now it's Aubameyang. Can he play it out wide to Marco Royce? He's going to try to cut inside. And he gets taken down the side of the box. And it's another penalty for us. What is going on in this game? Since Aubameyang and Royce do have the same penalty stats, we'll let Aubameyang take this one and put it off to the right. Hopefully, can he get it by Silicon? There it is. He goes off to the left this time, and it's 2-0 for us before halftime. Well, the halftime stats do tell a pretty clear picture. We've had a lot more opportunities than Ajax. They've had more possession, but they really haven't done much with it. And if we keep going like we're going, this could be a 3 or 4-0 game. Weigel, man, they're just sliding in like crazy right now. We're going to try to find Marco again. Can he do something with it? Fake shot, gets by one, have a shot Marco. What a finish, this Dortmund team is incredible. I haven't been able to play a game with them yet, but already Marco Royce is just putting away shots like it's nobody's business and the passing is just on point. I'm so excited to use this team in the Bundesliga and give Bayern Munich a run for their money this year. 
With about 30 minutes left, we're gonna make some last substitutions. Ramos, Mkhitaryan, and Bender coming in. And this is just to make sure that the players do rotate around, keep them happy, and make sure they're not complaining too much. Oh, Pischek still on the ball, plays it across. A little bit more passing, Kagawa finds Mkhitaryan. Can he finish this one on the near post? And off the post and cleared away. It could have been four, but with two minutes left, we're not quite done yet. Well, there is the final whistle, and we get the result we were looking for. A little bit lucky to have gotten two penalties in this one. But I think we fully deserve this win, and we start the season off with a preseason tournament win, and the fans are cheering behind us. And things are looking good going into the Bundesliga season. The team's gelling together. We made some good signings, and things are looking up. A final look at the stats. We had 10 shots, nine of which were on target. Pretty even on the possession. I think we did catch up a little bit, ending with 46%. And overall, I was really happy with that game. We got a loan offer from 1860 München for Hendrik Bonmann. So we're going to accept this. I don't think he's going to get too much play time as a keeper for us. So I might as well send him out alone and let them pay his wages. Finally, Hoffenheim have given in and they've accepted a 13 million transfer fee for Niklas Sula. This will be a great addition for the team because he could be a good rotational player for us. We're going to start with the 40. Oh, he wants 100,000 a week. So we're going to do a similar thing to what we did with Hermann. We're gonna give him like 70,000 a week, give him four years, and we'll also give him the squad rotational player. I'm not sure if he's gonna be important first team for us. We'll start with this, see what he has to say. Absolutely no problem with Sula, so we can add him to the team as well. He's gonna be a brick wall for us in the back. And welcome to the team as well, Nicholas Sula. From here on, we're gonna be including Sula in the trainings. I substituted him for Leitner and it looks like Weigel is on the verge of becoming a 73 rated player. So really good stuff from the training. Well, I've been in talks with Real Madrid for Carvajal and they look like they want a lot of money for him. So I think we might have to go for another target. We have two other potential players that could fit at that right back position. I think I'm gonna be going uh, for that right back from Monaco. So we'll go over right to the short list and see if we can pick up Fabinho, who is worth quite a bit less, but he is 70 rated, uh, 21 years old, so he's got a lot of potential ahead of him. So we'll approach to buy him as well, and we'll start with a 8 million offer, see what they have to say in regards to that. Another transfer offer here for one of our younger players, Pascal Stencil, so we'll be sending him over to Oldham Athletic. Hopefully he can develop a little bit while he's over there. Even more loan offers for a couple of our younger players, and I'm gonna accept both of these because I just don't see him getting too much play time for us. We've got such a competitive team that I want to make sure these guys do develop and get some playtime. As you guys can see, our first match of the Bundesliga season is going to be against Borussia Mönchengladbach. I'm going to save that for the next episode, but before you guys go, I am going to ask for you guys to leave some country suggestions for me to scout. I haven't purchased a scout yet because I'm still waiting on a 5-star, five 5-star five scout to show up because we do have the budget to purchase one. So I'm just going to keep waiting, and once one does show up, I'll pick him up. But I will also end this episode off with a squad report since we have gone to a new month and we've already had some growth. So we'll sort by position, of course, and jump through the team really quick, see if there's any players that have seen considerable growth. And Poslock's one of those players already up plus two, and he's got potential right around 80. So I'm really looking forward to him being a good player. Hummels has also gone up plus one. Well, Sar has gone up plus one as well. We'll see if there's any other players. Durham up plus one. Uh, Weigel up plus one, so already some incredible growth for this team. And Bluskowski is on loan at Fiorentina. He's growing as well, so that's really good to see. I'm not sure whether he'll be able to fit into the team once he is back. Sahin up plus one in addition to everybody. Leitner and Marco Royce, all our high-rated players just seem to be going up. So I'm incredibly happy about that. And this team is just shaping up to be Bundesliga contenders, that's how I'm describing it. But guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until the next episode of this Borussia Dortmund crew mode, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.